welcome to Coding After Work stream. We have a guest with us today. Yes. Yeah. But we also have uh, other stuff we want to say. We do. Yeah. So before we start, we would like to thank our sponsor, Progress Telerik. They have amazing Blazor UI components with over 90 components now. They are close to 100. They are. They are. And in, in this rate, who knows? <laughs> who Next knows? stream, we might have 100. <laughs> I don't know. So if you're working with Blazor, you should definitely give it a try. We will add a link in the chat. We also want to sponsor, no, we, we want to thank our <laughs> sponsor, thank, yeah. If Insurance. They want to decrease injuries in society and they need our help to do so. Crunching historical data with .NET technology to predict the future. And I like that. Mm, that's fantastic. And they have a huge tech community. Uh, I think last time I checked over 900 people and they are growing like never before. Cool. We post all our streams uh, and more on YouTube. So if you're not already following us there, please click subscribe and the little alert bell. So you will get a notification whenever we post a new video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, follow us on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's bring in our guest, Dejan Milicic. Hi, Hello. welcome. Hello Stockholm, this is Belgar speaking. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> can we have your points <laughs> exactly <laughs> definitely a, a european thing with the uh song contest eurovision yeah. song contest <laughs> i forgot that and tried once um, in uh, inappropriate uh, company and and i would like looked at a point like this like, what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah it doesn't always work at least not in an international um, capacity. Well, we do actually have a American friend who uh, every year uh, invites all his friends over to watch the European. To be um, fair, he is from the UK. Yeah, that's Even true. Even though he lives in Seattle. So. That's true. That's true. But still, he introduces it to the Americans. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for you for us. joining us. Um, and we know that Jimmy is already a fan of RavenDB. I am. Yeah. I am. I never thought I would be, to be honest. Yeah. So we had uh, Oren Aini uh, on our show, on our uh, podcast, and he introduced some... some um, well, we talked about Raven, and we thought, hmm, maybe this is a good thing. So I brought that to, to work, and we got connected to Dejan and... and uh, trying to to figure things out getting yeah. it to work on on our machine and all of a sudden you were doing the unexpected and switching over to uh to at least partially to, yeah we're, uh, implement, to we're implementing more and more into raven so yeah. every day so it's it's fantastic and if if you can convince your colleague mm -hmm. who's uh well he's a hardcore sql guy definitely um then i think it I might think, have potential. <laughs> I think he is even more amazed than I am, which is like... Is that something you hear a lot? That people are surprised on how how good it works in real life? Yeah. Uh, so the part of my job is to... Uh, so I'm in the position of developer advocate. And this is interesting because as you are growing older and you're, you're a developer or, or coder, you start to thinking, okay, you, what will be a part of my career development? Will I be coding when I'm 70 or uh, am I going to go into the management? And this is very interesting because I still do coding, but without these pressures and deadlines. So I try to <laughs> develop uh, awesome code examples and all awesome demonstrations that would uh, uh, impress people. So, uh, and I also try to keep my integrity as a as like person and a developer. Hmm. So I won't go around saying, okay, this is the best database ever. So my goal is to be like a waiter in a restaurant. I'm here for developers when they need me, but only when they call me. So I'm not this, right. I'm right. not, I, I try not to be this like car salesman or, or life insurance <laughs> guy. I think and, you win a lot by having yeah. that mentality, because if someone is trying to sell me something overly like the car salesman, um, I will automatically back away a little bit. Yeah. 
No, I do not need socks. <laughs> My feet are cold, but I don't need socks. Yeah, we we have a, uh, a particularly um, uh, <laughs> how do I put this? We have a shop in Sweden where the staff is well, they could make a fortune selling cars. Let me put it like that. So if you go in there and you accidentally look at someone, they will run up to you and they will try to, to sell you socks and, and underwear. Sock, and... a tie, underwear, pants. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah. So you have no. this like, do not establish high contact. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't even go in there. No. <laughs> I'm waiting outside. And I, so I need pants. Jessica, could you go in? <laughs> is true he <laughs> i actually left him outside went in got the pants because uh some for some reason i'm better at saying no at least I, to the salesperson i can't say no for the life of me <laughs> oh, that's true you need socks i do need socks i'm never gonna wear these but i need them that's true <laughs> yeah I, so we appreciate I, on that <laughs> yeah i watched a couple of your streams and i i i was really uh, uh, positively surprised by Jessica bringing up some topics on the lines of, of integrity and empathy and people like actually not behaving like robots and, or salespeople, but like truly human beings. So I also, I also try to, to, to nurture that, those, those like virtues. I think they are virtues. And I think you can Absolutely. be both like uh, empathical and ethical and develop business and be successful because this is a marathon. And uh, if you not uh, approach it like in a greedy manner, or if you don't try to win easy points, is, so if, if you build mm -hmm. your career and stand behind the product and listen to people, I think you, in the long run, you will achieve even more. Yeah. Yeah. At Agreed. least I hope that's. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> so let's bring in your, your screen and let's let you okay, take the rain. Bird. Yeah, yeah sure. it is an awesome bird. Yeah, yeah it's very smart. <laughs> okay, so uh, my idea is to uh, show today how you uh, can be a good developer by being lazy and how this <laughs> is really boring database. And when you think about it, like boring seems like a bad thing, but uh, boring uh, was the opposite. Uh, so uh, opposite of boring would be full of surprises. And I'm joking in, in this age I'm in, uh, there, when you have a surprise in your life, it's rarely something positive. <laughs> so I'm, I'm by nature, I'm the guy, uh, who don't want to have any uninvited surprises. So I try to, uh, to, to live that way, to, to live calmly. And, uh, I discovered RavenDB by accident, like most people did following Oren reading his blog and I got interested. I started following it and then I decided to join the crew to help them build something really, really interesting. Okay. So, uh, I got it downloaded here. So I went and downloaded it. Here it is. So let me start it. So I'm running windows machine, as you can see, and I'm starting a uh, PowerShell console, uh, with Raven TV. And this is first interesting thing. This is database that's actually serving like web servers, serving studio. If you've been working with SQL server, you remember there's enterprise manager, you install it and then you run it. And here I have a database, which is serving its own management studio. So a web application, so database serving web application. And this is uh, like first, for, <laughs> let's, let's call it first boring thing. You don't need to install anything <laughs> to run your database and database takes care of itself. One of but that's, like, um, sorry, that, that's one of the really, really cool things, but because what you did now was just download a SIP and you have your database running, which is amazing. Yes, I essentially, so I can also show you uh, what uh, uh, installation process would be like. So if I go one, one step uh, above and let's go with, uh, this is it I uh, downloaded. So when I unpack it, here it is. And, uh, I run it again. And installation wizard will open. 
All right. So inevitable <laughs> license agreement. <laughs> and then uh, you see unsecure and secure setup. So I will pick up insecure, unsecure because I will be running on my own local machine. Default settings. That was it. That's, That's pretty cool. It's a little bit nifty. <laughs> <laughs> And then if I go and create database, like let's go with uh, code and after work database. Uh, when I go into folder, here is server, here is Raven data, databases. And you can actually see the folder where my code and after work database is. And uh, I can look at the main file on the disk where the whole database is contained. And actually, you can go and peek into indexes and all other data structures, journals, which are used for transactions, and things like that. So uh, it's pretty much unexpectedly open. When I was working with SQL Server, I like there's some like proprietary things going on and protocol and folders. I never went there. This is much more approachable if you want to go and peek around and see what's going on. And then you have empty database, uh, zero documents in it, and you you don't see anything and you would like to try out something. And again, instead of doing exciting work of searching for some sample data load in it, we have boring sample data set seeding. <laughs> so if I go into tasks and create sample data, I'm, I'm seeding sample data. Could you zoom in just a little bit in the UI? Mm -hmm. I hope it's OK there we now. Go. Or a little bit one more. more level as well. There we go. Thank Perfect. You. OK, so what you can see here, uh, I have a sample data set. These are collections uh, for people working with relational databases. These would be tables. So when you enter table, you see visual representation of data. And actually, then when you enter, specific row it's not a row it's a JSON. and when you when you take a look at these like sample data set and employees you you suddenly all of a sudden recognize a famous um, northwind database which is a canonical <laughs> example delivered by Mac microsoft even in the era before internet i think i think in 91 something like that with microsoft <laughs> success this was delivered. And this is really, really nice data database. I would like to meet a person who, who developed it. Because <laughs> you have all these uh, examples of relationships and sample data uh, in this database. A silent uh, legend. This is, this really. is really... <laughs> Oh, no. Did you freeze? <gasps> I'm back. Oh, you're back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is my internet or Chrome or deities of live demos uh, looking unfavorable. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be a live demo if anything didn't go wrong. So there's that. Yeah. A friend of mine uh, is doing live demos and presentations at the conferences, and he intentionally introducing uh, uh, glitches here and there just to wake people up. <laughs> <laughs> All them, he's doing things like that. So what I was talking while I was frozen was that uh, this is really nice database because you have all these examples of relationships and uh, uh, various types of data. And what is interesting is that uh, original Northwind database has something like, uh, I think, 18 to 20 tables. And when you take a look uh, here, you see only, uh, only nine collections. Uh, the thing is, with relational databases, you go and split. So you build your objects, your classes, and then you go and split them into tables. And you're forced to do that because uh, relational databases are uh, technically incapable of uh, representing collections and complicated or complex data structures. So what we did here, we went back and reassembled these tables into well, for people uh, fond of domain-driven design, you're looking at the uh, aggregate root. 
brought to you by Eric Evans. So what you're looking at is that now we are able to, again to uh, have together uh, order and order lines. And you can see if, if again, if you're fond of domain-driven design, this is aggregate, aggregate root. And what you're looking at here is the value object. It's highness value object, a value object meaning piece of the data that uh, makes sense only in the context of parent object. So right. if you would, if I would pull out this order line and send it to you by email, you would be looking like in a strange way at my email. But if I send you this whole document, you would be able to see actual meaning of, of uh, this syrup being present here. So uh, we are not forced anymore to split objects into tables and to reassemble them again. So no need for object relationship mapper, no need for persistence layer modeling. You simply go and uh, store your objects into database and load it back. So from that perspective, this is again, really boring database because it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it, let's call it predictable, low ceremony. So just to show you, uh, and I will do some live coding, I promise, but I, I have some handy examples here. Uh, this is demo.ravendb.net. So you can go here to see some code examples. Uh, so what you can see here is the production grade quality uh, code. And I'll zoom it a bit, where you create three objects and you store them into the database. And you see as a developer, uh, you open session, you work with session in the same manner as you would work with DB context in entity framework, for example. So you're storing things, you're modifying them, session is tracking all these changes. And finally, when you say session does save changes, uh, asset transaction will be created and your objects will be saved to the database. So what you're looking at is precisely or exactly same code you would write in production. So low ceremony, no need for additional modeling. Uh, simply these objects will be serialized into JSON and stored uh, in, where's my database? Hello. So it will be stored like this, like JSON. And since this is database uh, produced by uh, C Sharp developers, you have ability to create C Sharp class based on underlying JSON. Nice. You what is, I approve. What is <laughs> for me especially interesting or appealing is this uh, non polluting nature of database. So you see, you will model your, let's call them business domain objects in a normal way without even thinking about persistence and uh, no special uh, attributes you would need to add or any conventions about the uh, name of the properties. You can use lists. You can use, uh, for example, location here, property location, which is a, a, a class location. You develop it like that and then in the end you save it to the data. But this is the best case scenario where your objects are completely unaware of the persistence. And this does not mean you don't care about persistence, but they shouldn't be caring. They shouldn't be aware if you, if you're just creating them in the memory or if you're persisting them. You know, what I noticed is that people are too obsessed with databases. You know, uh, I remember <laughs> back in the days, it's, it's a bit DB centric. If you think about it, I, I bet both of you were in the meetings and the project starts and you're in front of the whiteboard and people start drawing these rectangles and you think, okay, <laughs> we are modeling. And the moment they put two letters like PK or FK, like primary key or foreign key, I know things <laughs> will, will, go, will go south uh, because you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be uh, 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 thinking about the persistence. You should be thinking about like modeling real world and database shouldn't be affecting your, your modeling because it won't improve it. It will impose additional uh, restrictions and you will be thinking about additional things. And if I remember correctly, you can only think about five to seven things in the same moment. So yeah. if you can, if you can forget about the, this boring database and uh, leave it for later, 
I think it's a good, good thing. Yeah, kind of what I usually say, do what you're good at. If you're mm -hmm. a coder, code. Exactly. So from that perspective, uh, as I said, we are, we are looking here at low ceremony database. And uh, what is also interesting is uh, there's no DB administrator position with RavenDB. <laughs> Uh, idea here is for database to be grown up. So you database should be needing a, a dedicated person to take care of it. So usually, uh, when you, when you're working with your database, you, you're issuing queries and okay, let's look at our collection. So we have employees. So these employees have address and you can see someone designed this in the nineties. I, I, I doubt nowadays. <laughs> anyone would produce a design like this times are changing but anyway let's see i have nine employees let's see which of them are working uh, or living in london so what i'm going to do i'm going to query collection employees and i'm going to filter by address.ct and you see my typing skills are great <laughs> london and you see I filtered four out of nine employees. And the first thing I would like to bring your attention to is how slow this is. <laughs> <laughs> this 188 is milliseconds. This is server execution time. So my data, my favorite database took 188 milliseconds. Sometimes it takes 300 milliseconds to filter <laughs> four out of nine employees. This is horrific. <laughs> But let me show you something interesting. So this was first query. Maybe my database is shy. So let's turn the caching off. Let me repeat it. Okay. We are warming up now. It's eight milliseconds. Let me... That's 180 milliseconds improvement. Exactly. So let me query one more time. So it's almost instantaneous. So somehow the more i use it the, the faster it gets and uh, let me explain how come it was so slow first time so you see if you remember i don't know if Oren spoke uh, when he was guest in your uh, podcast uh, he got a bit frustrated so he was working first as a consultant and he was developing uh, he was working on uh, an hibernate open source project and then he started helping companies using and hibernate and relation database. And he started noticing same things over and over again to the point that he was ready to bet on a, on a lunch that he will be able to pinpoint a couple of, of uh, uh, developer sins by the lunchtime. And when you noticed, uh, when you notice things happening over and over again, you want to eliminate them. So not, not fix them, but prevent them. And that was part of uh, motivation. So you could say that this database was born out of frustration with the state of things. <laughs> so this innocent query here you're looking at is actually very dangerous. And we want things to be boring, not exciting. Uh, <laughs> and every single database in, on the planet, when you have something like this, so you would like to access collection or table, and you would like to filter by some field so in this case you see address dot city so i flattened out this nested structure with dot so every single database in the world when i have something like this will have to go over all employees read them one by one from disk check right. okay is this person living in london okay include her in result set or do not include and uh, for nine employees, this is always going to be fast. But then what happens? I test it on my machine with 10, 50, 100. It's blazingly fast. And I deploy to your organization. And then over time, new employees are coming, going, and you're doing, for example, soft deletion of the employees. So you keep old ones in the database, et cetera, et cetera. And after two or three years, people are coming back to you saying, you know, your application, it got a bit slower over time. So what is happening is that uh, this query here will produce something called full table scan. And full table scan is simply database engine. Every time I do filtering like this, 
it will go pick up all employees or all orders from the disk, read them one by one and do comparison. And of course, people who are building databases would like to avoid that. So they try to optimize. So something you probably heard under the name index was introduced. So index is essentially pre-crunched data, pre-prepared uh, uh, analysis of the data. So when you go and query uh, employees like this, index will be used and index will help uh, to prevent uh, scanning of all employees over and over again. So same story as with people. If you're a good developer, you will be lazy. You will try to optimize as motivated by your laziness and the result will be great. So in this case, uh, a Raven tried to prevent full table scan from happening ever. And conscious de design decision was made to introduce uh, indexes and they are mandatory. So in RavenDB, you are incapable of uh, uh, querying raw data. And I promise you, I did not create index up front. <laughs> we started with with empty database. So what happened behind the scene first time these 188 seconds, Raven went ahead, inspected all these indexes. So you see I'm now in the indexes, concluded there is no suitable one to satisfy my query. And it went ahead and created this. This is automatic index. That's why it took 188 milliseconds because as you see in this diagram, Raven engine went over all employees and extracted the address city from them. And if I click here on the terms, you will see that all these, all five cities where employees are living were extracted. That's why it took 188 seconds. Second time I, I, I performed same query, this index was already in place and execution engine was able to use it, to leverage it. Third time, RavenDB concluded, okay, here we have something that's repeating. So this page must be really popular or someone is doing live coding <laughs> and, and bragging how RavenDB is fast. So <laughs> more memory was allocated uh, to handle this, more CPU uh, time was allocated and that's why it was so slow. Uh, sorry, so fast. Uh, so- uh, that, That's pretty cool. Yeah. And if I were car salesman, I would say this is artificial intelligence, but it's really <laughs> people trying to build a database that would be predictable and that would be working along with you. So helping you taking care on, of you on, on Friday, Friday afternoons, if you, if you forget, if you made a mission hmm. and forget to create index, Raven, D, we will jump ahead and create one for you. And you see when I run now run this uh, query, I'm getting results really fast and RavenDB is informing me about what's going on. So if I now decide to go with a slightly different query, so let's see who lives in UK, same thing happen, happens again. I'm querying field that was not indexed, 69 milliseconds, but if I repeat it, it's really fast and you see here one more automatic index created. It's so old one, hmm. new one. And did you spot what just happened? Something moved on the screen. So yeah. Uh, yeah. what happened is that I had two, two automatic indexes, older one and newer one, and older one just disappeared. So what happened behind the scene? Raven got title, started self-analyzing, and concluded that this a newer automatic index is covering both city and country. Older one. Oh, that is so cool. Covering uh, city. And okay, we don't need two overlapping indexes or indices, as I discovered recently, that is correct. <laughs> and it went ahead and wiped out obsolete one, older one. And now this that one. That is can... mind blowing. I. I... I did a, a little bit of work in the doing queries like this, and I noticed exactly this behavior. I just stopped what I was doing on a team's call to my <laughs> colleagues. You need to see this. You need to see this. And I remember you just sat there 
in silence. And he, he, he just didn't respond. He was just sitting there glaring at the screen. And he was like, what? How? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I really appreciate software doing the work for me so I don't have to do it. Because obviously it's going to be better at doing their own stuff mm -hmm. than I will ever be. So that exactly. is so, so cool. So instead of like uh, when I was doing SQL Server, I was always thinking, okay, I know this following pattern for every application I was producing with Entity Framework. 80% of the code was really, really fast and 20% was suboptimal. And I was always thinking, okay, I'm not expert. I need to learn more. I need to learn how to optimize. And then I started meeting other people and almost all of them had the same problem. So you usually reach out for the depper or something similar. You start hard uh, coding, manually writing all these queries. Uh, in this case, instead of bringing expert to your side, you have a, a bit of built-in knowledge and database tries to take care of all these optimization things behind the scene. Uh, lots of things, I, I there's not enough time this evening to, to show all of that, but lots of things happening behind the scene. So for example, if you have server with lots of lots of memory and if a uh, uh, data set or database is smaller than the memory itself, RavenDB will automatically upload everything in the memory. So you'll get something like Redis uh, without even being aware. All right. That's so as cool. you can see now, this automatic index has all these uh, countries extracted and addresses extracted. And what is even interesting, uh, RavenDB tries to be really transparent. So if you go into stats, storage report, you can actually see uh, pink box are my documents and these uh, blue ones, I think this is blue, uh, these are indexes. <laughs> and you can see this is automatic index that was created as a result of my second query. And right. of course, you see now this is downside of the indexes. They are taking disk space. Yeah. Indexes are in RavenDB closest thing to materialized views from relational database. So things are pre-computed. Uh, RavenDB forbids uh, any kind of attempts to do calculations or computations during query time. So queries are really simple. And these more complicated uh, calculations are done uh, during indexing time. They're done once, results are stored to the disk. So your queries will actually be picking up results that are, that are pre-computed. Nice. So I think in SQL Server, when you create an index, you need to add all the columns that you want to not query, but also the the columns that you want to have in the result. At least I think it's that way. But looking at the uh, um, the indexes that you showed, it only had country and uh, city and ID. Is that can can the indexes that I create in RavenDB, is that only for the things that I want to query and all the other data is just magically got them by ID or how, how does that work? Yeah. So ac actually, uh, when you start learning RavenDB, then somehow you, you start thinking more about the indexes and execution and number of requests. So as a rule of thumb, when you think about the index, what, what is an index in its essence? So index is a way to uh, enable you to do efficient filtering and ordering. So for example, if I go into this index, and now this is not uh, automatic index, this is so-called static index, which you go and write yourself when you want to take more control and do more complicated things. So when you think about it, uh, your index will contain only fields that you're going to be uh, filtering uh, uh, against or ordering. So what you can see here is so-called map produce index, which is doing aggregations. And this is orders by company. So if I go, go and query my index, you see what is the result. We have ID of the company, we have account, and we have a total value of all, all orders, uh, all elements or all products in this order. 
So now when I go and uh, uh, so you see what I'm doing here, I'm querying index directly. Right. So I can say I would like to see all uh, companies with more than 25 orders. And uh, again, without caching, if I keep repeating query like this, it's always coming. Of course, I don't have caching turned on. It's always coming from the database. And you see that uh, my database is filtering these results. So I can go with, uh, if I go with uh, something else, I will get again, very fast results back. And yes, I'm, I'm bragging here. Okay. This database is fast, but uh, I'm showcasing you this on the very uh, big data set of just 830 orders. <laughs> so if I may, uh, uh, now showcase a bit, uh, what happens, let's, let's imagine it's, it's black Friday and this Northwind company is very popular. So what I will do. I will increase number of the orders in the system. And you remember I was uh, querying and my results were coming almost instantaneously. So something like this is coming pretty, pretty fast, almost instantaneous. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to increase number of the orders in my system and I'm going to use something called patching operation where you are able to speak to your database in JavaScript. So this is the syntax. I'm accessing orders collection and I would like to update this collection. And I'm writing actually JavaScript here. So what I'm going to do, I will take every order from orders collection and I will create hundred copies of it. <laughs> and since RavenDB is using, so again, developers at RavenDB uh, do not like to in invent things that are already there and working properly. RavenDB is using HTTP as a communication protocol. So I'm using put verb to actually create new things in the database. So I will place these orders in the same collection. So this is name of the collection. And I'm going to use infamous this, which has many meanings in JavaScript. <laughs> in this case, this is current order from orders collection I'm iterating over. So I if I did everything right, if, if uh, deities of live demos are favorable upon me, I will increase this from 830 to, 800, to 83,000 orders, and we will be able to see how RavenDB behaves then. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> All right. I'm creating uh, uh, lots of writes uh, per second. Let me quickly before this is over showcase that I'm creating something like eight to 10,000 write operations per second. This is done. I have 83,000 orders in, in my data <laughs> now. So just a few more. <laughs> just a few more, but okay. Th this was challenge. Let's go to 1 million orders. <laughs> 1 million. <laughs> All right. Let's increase this to 1 million orders. Of course, this will take a bit longer something like two to three minutes on my average developer laptop, you see, we are already at 140,000 orders. And if I go into indexes or indices, you will see that <laughs> they are catching up something like 10 to 15,000 new orders per second. Nice. As orders are arriving in the system, indexes are catching up. And if I, I like that here, you can see it in real time. I'm admitting nothing, but I might just have <laughs> sat, sat, sat there and watching the, oh, it's rebuilding, oh, it's rebuilding, oh, another one. Oh. Yes, so you see I'm creating something like 10,000 uh, documents per second. Uh, I, I'm, RavenDB is able to use my, uh, my CPU and memory pretty, pretty good. Uh, this is nothing, nothing spectacular, this allocation of CPU, so things are under control. You can see that uh, indexes are producing uh, entries, uh, mapping, reducing. You, you basically see all the statistics and you can also I like watch. statistics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what is even more interesting, uh, if you're carrying traumas from uh, relational databases, while this multiplication is happening now, we're at 700,000 orders. If I go and query orders by company without caching, 
these are the results on the, on, on the live queries upon index that has been constantly updating. Hmm. So I'm, I don't use caching. This is executing. You see, we have almost 1 million orders. I think you froze again. No, no, it was getting so excited. Are you back? No. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> Good. That, that's a cliffhanger. I need to yeah. know. <laughs> I switched something. Uh, I switched the screenshot and now we have all of a sudden 1 million orders. <laughs> yes, we have 1 million orders in, in my database. And usually, like, for some reason, people... Uh, I managed to impress people over and over again with 1 million orders. Yeah. So I, I multiplied it. You can see uh, if I go here, uh, all these orders are indexed and I can present to you. So you remember I had 830 uh -huh. orders. Now I have 1 million orders. Let's see what's the <laughs> one in the million. Time. <laughs> so just to show you that I'm not cheating, let's go with count. Uh, being greater than 100,000, maybe. Probably too much. Let's go with 10,000. All right. Companies with more than 10,000 orders. It's still instantaneous. It is because... How? What happened... <laughs> Let me show you. Let me show Thank you. We you. Have, <laughs> we have visualizer. Uh, order oh, my systems. gosh. I have never been <laughs> as excited about a database ever before. <laughs> uh, for the first I mean, time, I've been raving universe. about this, pun intended, yeah. for a while raving. now. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> Sorry. For the, first, for the first time after university, I'm presenting you B plus 3 in action. <laughs> so let me just zoom out a bit. So what you can see here is the depiction I took these three sample orders, and now I'm show showcasing you what is happening behind the scene. So these three orders were uh, analyzed, and this is partial aggregation, which took uh, only these three, you see, for specific companies. So this is partial aggregation. And what we have here, what it says, eight more uh, collections here to the right. So to the right, we have uh, eight more boxes like this. And th then recursive aggregation is performed upon these nine. And this is the result set that's stored on the disk. And when I'm querying, I'm querying actually these boxes. So when I say, give me all companies with orders uh, above 6,000 or 5,000, this company will be included because you see here is pre-computed and stored on the disk aggregation. And what is even more interesting, as I was adding more orders, this tree was not recomputed. So when I have new order by this same company, RavenDB will touch this box, increase this count and this total value. And then after that, one more touch to this to increase the count and the total. And that's it. So you have best of both worlds. Results are here pre-computed, waiting on the, on the disk for your query to pick them up. And updates are cheap because this is B plus 3. And when you're adding new nodes, you don't need to recompute everything. You're just incrementally adding to this box and adding to this, and that's it. That's why my indexes were able to pick up all these uh, uh, 1 million orders so blazingly fast, come mm. up with results. And of course, if you go to storage report, you can see that orders by company is a bit larger now. It's 428 megabytes. And all these aggregation results are being stored. So this is, for me, this is impressive, like 1 million entries. <laughs> I can increase it even more, but I, I think you, you, you trust me when I say uh, this will be uh, equally fast. Well, <laughs> you, you went from 800 to a million and it took about the same time. So I, I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> okay. So, and I prepared some 
I want this database to be boring in the sense when I say boring, <laughs> you install it. And if you forget about it, that's the best thing because you don't want to be a uh, team that's developing this is working with the database and developing it. You are a developer. You want to be writing mm. your application. Yeah. Yeah. I usually compare it with the window when you will notice window when it's broken or dirty or malfunctioning. But if it's there doing what it's supposed to be doing, protecting you, you, you from the, the cold or heat and letting enough light in, you will simply don't, you won't be thinking about it. So we have I a question do... for you. Yes. Would you say that the index sizes will scale linearly with the data size? Yes, unless you produce something that's called fan out index. And fan out index is index that will produce multiple entries per one document. Mm -hmm. So what you can see here is I have 1 million orders and you see orders by ship and location that contains 700,000 entries. So you see some, some of these indexes contain 77 entries. Some of them contain million, some of them contain 700. Uh, the reason for this is that sometimes you will produce multiple entries per one uh, per one document. So if you're going to say orders by products, then you will create for every order line in in your uh, in your order document. If you have orders by products, you will index all these products for one order, and then you will produce something like twenty indexing or thirty indexing entries for one order. If you have uh, like order to order count, then you will have same number of uh, index entries as as it's the number of the document. So sometimes uh, you will have if if we get back. So sometimes orders by company you will have just eighty nine entries because we have eighty nine companies who made all these orders, even though we have one million orders. Sometimes orders by totals you will have same number of entries as uh, the number of the documents. So sometimes if I go back to the, um, uh, what I wanted to do is storage report. So sometimes you see, we increased to 1 million orders here. This order totals did not grow so much, but orders by ship and location grew uh, significantly. So depending on the way you're writing indexes on, on the, on the calculations or, or aggregations you're creating, sometimes it will be linearly, sometimes even bigger. And of course you cannot, there is no technical or technological solution that is silver bullet. You must make a compromise and find right way to balance. Okay. Disks are now cheaper. It's okay for me to, 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 to allocate gigabytes, but of course not. Uh, not over certain uh, limit. <laughs> or you can just build smart indexes. <laughs> or indices. Was that the yeah. call? <laughs> yes. Yes. And thank you for the explanation. It made sense. Yeah. You're welcome. Awesome. So now I would like to show you uh, how to be lazy and win. <laughs> with, yeah, with we it. like that. <laughs> okay. So I prepare something that, uh, that I think people will like, and uh, I will try to present you document management system that I built in one afternoon or, or cool. even short amounts of time. Uh, here is my document management system. Let me open blazingly fast visual studio, uh, with <laughs> reach Harper on top of it. All right. So let me close all of these. So what I wanted to present today is all right so let me delete this database oh, and no. let me all our million <laughs> all of our million orders are gone so let me uh -oh. build document management system with minimum possible minimum possible amount of coding so idea here is that i should be able to uh where's my data here it is all right. So idea here is that I would like to be able to uh, keep my personal documents, uh, uh, various kinds of contracts uh, uh, with the phone provider, with internet provider, 
and be able to search against uh, content of these documents. So, for example, I have a PDF with very creative content. <laughs> I would like to be able to search through all the PDFs to find out uh, what the content is. Or if I have, again, very creative content inside of the Word document, as you will see, I present you lorem ipsum <laughs> as sample text. Or something that I find especially exciting is ability to have some images with text and then to be able to search for Ferrari and get this image as a result. And uh, it turns out RavenDB can help me with this. So this is document manager system that I'm going to present to you. And of course, I'll zoom a, a bit. So let me first showcase you some data seeding. Right, so I will comment this out. So here is a piece of the code which will create all these uh, documents. I will run it and I will show you uh, what is the result of this execution. This, this is essentially seeing the data, the live coding. I have interesting case. All right, I need to apply my license. Developer license is needed. So let me go find it. So just a second. Now you see I'm doing all of this in a live coding session. <laughs> all right. Here is my license. So I will take it. I will go to the studio. And I will register it here. All right. So I have a developer license now. So second try. All right. Hopefully this time I have a good outcome. Okay, great. So what I have here, I have four JSON documents. So this is interesting thing. So I have a JSON document here with just name and I have I, what I use for this uh, little project of mine is the ability of RavenDB to store something called attachment. So this is binary data. This is pretty much the same thing as you would do and go write email and attach attachment. So you see this Ferrari image I showed case a moment ago. This piece of code uh, uploaded it here. So I created new document with name image and I uploaded stream from the image. So you see this piece of code created this JSON document and uh, image attachment along with it. So I have a document with name PDF and the attachment is this PDF I showed case and same thing for the Excel and Word. So in this JSON document I have attached uh, Word document with lorem ipsum text. So my goal here now is to create full text search engine that would provide me with the means of searching against content of these attachments. So I present to you a solution to this problem. Here it is. I think you'll agree that I'm using rather low amount of the code. So let me just show you what I'm doing here. This is so-called map index. So in RavenDB, or when you work on the RavenDB from C Sharp, you inherit Epsar class and you define something called mapping. So mapping will, be, will process every document and create this data structure for it. So in this case, I'm processing all these documents from my database. So all four of them will be processed. I am I will get all the attachments from uh, for every one of them. So in this case, one attachment will be fetched for every document and I'm here processing them. So I will stream the content. I will extract the text from the attachment and I will create full text search index for the content. 
now just to show you how it works in the practice and then I will show you how I did it actually. So here is index that was created from this class. You see I gave it custom name document sl slash uh, search. Here it is. And if you go into index itself, terms, query, you will see. What I have here is content of PDF, image, Word document, and Excel document, extracted, tokenized, and ready for search. So you remember Ferrari on the image. Let me revisit it again. So this is image, and it contains Ferrari. So let's see if I'll be able to search that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to query my index. And of course, since I don't have any filtering condition, I get four of them. But when I say where, query equals Rari, what I'm getting back as a result is the document which has attachment, which is image that contains word Ferrari. We have, yes, cool. <laughs> and we have a question regarding this, uh, the uh, uh, search. Uh, so this might be a weird question, but can you use indexing and full text searching for a document with a document being stored and hosted somewhere else, like uh, a blob CDN endpoint? Uh, technically, yes, you can. So you would put something on S3 and you would be indexing it, but uh, I will show you in a moment how. <laughs> so how I did it, how, how I performed. So for me, this is very interesting. So how I did it, uh, if I go into this index and if I look at, at this content, this was produced, materialized from, from this. What you will see is that I have here extract text dot from attachment. And I will zoom it a bit. I see Jim is looking. So, <laughs> so natural question is where does this come from? Is Raven That is the natural this? question. <laughs> yes. So where I'm pulling this off. So this piece of code will extract, uh, will take stream from the attachment. You see the stream, it will this is a method that will extract the text and pro uh, provide it to query. And you see here, since RavenDB is built uh, around Lucene.net, we are using Lucene indexes. So you see, I'm stating here that my query field will be full text search field. And that, that, that's why I was able to perform search when I say Ferrari. So question holds, where does extract text come from? So I sat down and I wrote a class like this. Extract text class from attachment static method, which is accepting file name and stream. And based on the extension of the file, as you can see here, I took some NuGet packages. You see them here. So because I'm lazy for <laughs> OCR, I'm using NuGet package iron OCR. So this piece of the code will take image content as a stream and it will essentially say OCR.read and it will extract text and it will return a list of strings, which is this Ferrari in 2019, 2018, whatever it was. So OCR component will extract text from here. And this method will return the content. So you see, if file name ends up in JPG or PNG, I will call get image text. Here it is. And this method will return text. So for uh, PDF, I'm using iText Sharp, which is again P, um, NuGet package. And I'm using OpenXML to extract Word text. As you can see here, so this is extra extracting Word text and this is extracting Excel text. So I developed this, I tested it, it works. So how to now, how to make your database use your own code, how to extend it. 
So RavenDB has this interesting feature called additional sources. And this method that I just showcased in the studio is also uploaded here. But and you that's why only I... have the CS file there. Uh, yes. So what You're... I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you getting upset in a good way? Uh, yes. <laughs> so what, I, what I sent here to RavenDB, okay, I would like you to use some additional code. I will supply you this code. Go and read it from extracttext.cs, which is here. So RavenDB took content of this file, deployed it here as an additional source for this index. And then inside of the index, I'm able to uh, call this method. So extract text dot from attachment, you can call it here. And this code will execute so completely within the RavenDB. So I don't need to make any external calls. And now comes the really fun part you see I'm having using here. So how come Raven knows? How, how can this be compiled at all? So I had to specify NuGet packages here. So RavenDB will actually pull these NuGet packages and then compile class I upload. So I specify that here. Okay, additional assemblies, which can be DLLs as well. In this case, are additional assemblies from NuGet. So I specify name of the NuGet package and the uh, version. And of course, if you have your own private uh, NuGet uh, uh, server, you can add that as well. Or that can be path to the DLL or the server runtime. So you see, you can add all necessary NuGet packages, IRNO, CRI, TextSharp, uh, OpenXML, so RavenDB can actually compile this class I uploaded. This, this might be the coolest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> we actually have uh, a couple of comments. Okay, so I was expecting magic and then it turns out you actually did something for real? Nice. And also, I think someone is getting excited. Can you please show us the rest of that license key, please? <laughs> I, I can because this is just trial license that's uh, that's uh, uh, like valid for 30 days. So without any problems, I can show. Oh, there it. you go. And also, this is 50% holy cow and 100% awesome. And that's how I feel. And I don't <laughs> even like databases. <laughs> Yeah, so that's so, uh, uh, <laughs> actual, actual sentence is, is it's operationally boring, but when you start discovering things like that, you get excited a bit, which is strange. Who gets excited about the database? That's, I know, right? <laughs> so that's how I feel. <laughs> but exciting part for me is actually that when you look at it, this is whole code, which is providing way for me to read all the documents from the database, get their attachments, stream the content, and this line will extract text and produce full text search searchable index. And I'm saying in order to uh, extract text, go and use this class. And in order, in order to compile this class, you will need these NuGet packages. And that's it, how it gets deployed. So when I say, uh, where is my code? Index creation, create indexes will pick up all in uh, all classes from current assembly, which are inherited in Gapster class and upon running automatically deploy it. So if I go to the list of indexes, if I delete it, if I run it back again without seeding, so I want, I don't want to seed my data anymore. I already have it. And here is the code, which will perform some searching, right? So now when I run it, so deploying this will generate index here, which will pop up in a moment. Here it is OCR component working. It will be over in a few moments. Here it is. So I just recreated this index. You see all this text being present here. And as a result of the execution, this executed before index was created. So if I run it one more time, It should actually produce. Okay, searching for Ferrari, 24 milliseconds, total results one. Here is the document that has image that contains text I was searching for. <laughs> and now, for example, if you say, okay, these are the actual terms and 
I, I think he mentions his father here, or Charles. Let's see if that was uh, recognized. Okay, so, so what, what I will do, I will try to, okay, here it is. So if I go with Charles, let me see. Okay, I'm getting an image again. If I go with Lorem, since Word document contains Lorem Ipsum, I get this as a result. Now, let's say I'm, I would like to implement search as you type. So I don't want to have full names here, full terms. I would like to have, for example, engrams. Engrams are when you take word and split it into collections of two and three and four words. Because this is powered by Lucene.net, I can say, okay, I don't want to have standard analyzer processing this. I would like to have engram analyzer. So when I save it, again, you see indexes are being recomputed side by side. And then when recalculation is done, they're just switched. So while this is happening, you're still not prevented from querying. So now when I go into, into this index and look at the terms, ta -da, what you can see here is that now all these uh, extracted text have been uh, tokenized using engrams. So when I go and search for a C, I will probably get more than one result. So uh, you have a C somewhere in this picture. I don't know where. I did not prepare enough. <laughs> we trust you. So A, C, here it is. Satisfaction. Oh, there you here go. Satisfaction. And ha hacked hacker, A, C. And also the second result oh, yeah. is uh, we have A, C in the Word document. So somewhere within Laura Mipsum Latin text, the, there's A, C. So it's like, this is like wildcard car search, but this is much more efficient because all these uh, uh, big grams and tree grams have been uh, prepared up front. And when you look again at the storage report, you will be able to see here is, so this is the content of our documents, 80 megabytes, and this is full text search index, eight and a half megabytes of text ready to be, to be queried. Nice. So what I have now, and what is best thing, I have it on my GitHub, so I'm not cheating. So here it is with the fantastic typo that I made with Raven. <laughs> <laughs> but the code I just presented is present here. So here are uh, these documents uh, that I uploaded to the database. And here is the same content you saw from the uh, Visual Studio. So search index. And the only thing you won't be able to find there is license key. <laughs> so you will have to provide your own. You will have to go to <laughs> Iron OCR and register. And but otherwise, this is prototype of a small document uh, management system where you can store all kind of uh, like heterogeneous content and then uh, be able to uh, process it uh, and uh, perform full text search. I do have a follow-up question for that one. Will that query return a number on how significant of a hit it found? Uh, there's a better word for it. Um, pretty common with full text searching, maybe confidence factor? Uh, you have something called boosting. I think we have it here as an example because I'm a bad typer. Let me see. Uh, we have full text search query with boosting. So here is example of uh, different boost factors. So this code actually will execute. So this is cool. You see, when you go to live-test.ravenTV.net, this is publicly open live playground, completely unprotected. So don't put anything valuable here. <laughs> <laughs> and you will see some strange names. So demo user dash good. Uh, these are databases that are created when you visit uh, live this um, demo.ravendb.net. And when you go and run script, so this will be executed here. You get results, and these results are coming from one of these databases. So in this case, uh, we call it boosting. I don't know if this is standard term. So you see, uh, we are searching for the employee within the nodes and the uh, let me open notes. 
So employees have notes field, which is free text, and we are searching all employees. Uh, so we are querying employees and searching over notes field for three things. And these are boosting factors here. So you can go and edit them like 55 and 15 and execute it and maybe get different results this time. So you can boost different terms and give different weight to different terms. So if you're looking for the yellow uh, uh, shoes, yellow is more important to you than shoes or the other way around. So basically, if you look at features of Lucene.net, they are all supported, like suggestions, features. So for example, let's say these are the products. You can see them here. So very different names. So if I go and say something like this, from products, uh, where, search, uh, name, and let me type something I know for sure that does not exist in the database. So no results found. There's no products with this name. But then I can go and play Google saying, select me a uh, suggestion on the same field same term all right so now when i execute it what i'm getting back are closest names of the products mm. that actually uh -huh. exist so i can go and say did you mean this and i have an but interesting story one developer i spoke with did the following trick which is quite logical when you search for something for some term in the application if there are results he will show it to you, application will show it to you. If there are zero results, he performs suggestion immediately. But instead of showing, did you mean, he will take this and will perform search for this term. So he will automatically present these results to you when you're searching for this. Now, what is the interesting factor of this? employees in the companies were searching with the wrong first or last names for years mm. <laughs> because they were not aware that they are making a mistake because when they type, okay, I'm searching for the, let's say, <laughs> I don't know, uh, Jonathan, he would be actually getting results for this person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this actually sounds exactly what we need for coding after work when we are uh searching for for uh, in the transcriptions mm -hmm. and stuff like that in the future oh and we do have another question what if you have two documents with a red audi and a red ferrari and i search for red ferrari misspelled if it returns both will it tell me that the red ferrari is actually a better hit so actually, if you type in red uh, uh, space Ferrari, RavenDB will take this, split it into red and Ferrari, and perform search, search. So default operator is or. So it will be like, give me all documents that contain red or all documents uh, that contain Ferrari. So you will get zero results for the Ferrari because you misspelled Ferrari. So you will actually get results for red. But if I if I use the suggest uh, uh, for 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 that one, so for suggest it will work against tokenized content. So depending on the way you tokenized, so what I have here is the product search, for example. So what has been used here is you have full text search and suggestions. So if I go to the terms, you will see all all product names being tokenized separately so if you have actually you see these are single words but if you go into products you can see that product name usually consists of multiple words and mm. then this tokenizer standard tokenizer will split will produce four entries for this product this will be one this will be second etc and then what you can also do you can write your own uh more complex or complicated logic for uh, producing uh, MapReduce index. So maybe as a last example for this evening, I can again show something that's common to everyone. This would be a product recommendation engine, but yes, without please. artificial <laughs> intelligence. 
So now you will see me typing, and if I make mistakes, you will forgive me. <laughs> so product recommendation usually means that if I go and look at the orders, and if I do some analysis of these orders, and if someone go and delete this live database, I will be <laughs> surprised unpleasantly, but let's hope people are emphatic enough. So uh, how you would recommend products? Be, you remember this, people who bought uh, this or that in the same order also purchased something else. So uh, what I can do, I can, uh, I prepared the example up front. I hope my coding skills will now excel of analysis <laughs> uh, of existing orders that would be producing recommendations based on the products bought to get, purchased to get. All right. So what I will create is a new index. The name of the index will be product. Again, my typing skills, product, <laughs> uh, products. So usual convention is you go with collection name slash uh, feature or slash field. So product slash recommendations will process uh, orders. So I will go from, and what I'm writing now is a link. And I can also write this in JavaScript. So you see, I can write in link, C sharp link or JavaScript. Let me showcase a link example. So what I will say, I'm selecting all orders from collection docs.orders. And now I'm within these orders, orders, I'm processing all order lines. So from uh, L in O dot lines, you see I have helper. So this is what I mentioned uh, with the fan out. So orders and within every order, all of order lines will be processed. So I'm going to say select new and I'm going to say, okay, I would like to have product mapped and I will count one for every occurrence of the product within the, within the order. So now I need, I will produce all these, all these, uh, mappings. So per line in the order, what will be, uh, uh outputted is something like this. So let me save it. I will go step by step. So uh, product recommendations. Where is it? Have I lost my index? Here it is. Product <laughs> recommendations. When I check what I have here are IDs of all the products in all orders extracted. And I was counting one for every appearance of every product. And now it's aggregation time. This is called uh, reduce. So I go something like this from result in results and results are all these structured uh, produced here. I will perform grouping or aggregation of uh, every one of them by result dot product into group named G. And I will now perform selection again. And this structure I'm generating here must be same one as here. So these will be those boxes, if you remember visualization. So one layer of these boxes will be applied and then reduction on, will be applied again on them. So what I will have is a product, which will be aggregation key. And I will have a count, which will produce some of these ones. So you remember I out generated one, so I will produce some of the counts. All right, now when I save it, I made a mistake. Let me see where. <laughs> Beauty How of we know it's live. Key, so I need to go with capital K and you see. <laughs> All right. So product recommendation. Yeah, we even got that suggestion. Someone uh, actually, well, there you go. Found it as well. Quick eyes. Great. So I have again, these products, but now I have total sums. So I can say something like this. Give me all products that appeared 
more than 10 times or let's go with 20 times in my orders. So here is the list of the products that were ordered over 20 times or over 30 times. So I have most popular pro products here listed. Well, I can go with, let's go with 49. Here it is. So I already have aggregation of most popular products in my shop, so I can, I don't need to propone them, for example. And now recommendations. So what I will now do is a bit complicated, so uh, bear with me. So I will call it related. And I will perform selection. And I will say something like this. So it's, I will go with order dot lines, select, and I'm taking products. So I will take every product from every, every order line, but I will filter them. So I will say where product is not the current one. So for this product, yeah. I'm, I'm taking all other ones as related one, ones. And I will count one for every one of them. So I'm producing structure here saying new structure count equals one and product capital P <laughs> ID it's X. So this will actually, again, take product count one. Okay, here is one occurrence of this product. Related ones are all other products. So I'm saying it here. And I need to have this same field down here. So what I'm going to say is related, related, and I'm almost done. Don't, don't worry. So group select many. I'm going to select related. And I'm going to group. So this is complex data structure. So I'm going to group this complex data structure by every single of my related products. Right. And now I need to produce data structure that will showcase all these products. So I will say I'm writing Lambda function and I'm producing data structure here saying, okay, I'm repeating the count. I want to summarize all these related ones. Count and product related product will be capital K. And now that I produced array of related products, it would be also good in the same uh, operation within the same operation to order by descending count. So I'm going to go with this anonymous function for this one. So let's see now. I made a mistake somewhere again. There is a suggestion that you have a period at the end of line five. Mm-hmm. Yes, and this should be comma. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so close. Oh. But while you're figuring that out, uh, we got a comment. He, he just made me all giddy inside because you can use the fluent link functions. Yeah. That's what, that was exactly the feeling I got as well. <laughs> so product, product, let me see. If I fail this, I will reach out for the ultimate cheat of <laughs> copy paste. Of I mean, it code. is live. Something needs to go wrong. That's the yeah. rules. We all know it. Product equals key sum come on <laughs> you know what i will do let me go into my notes because i don't want this to last over two hours <laughs> <laughs> i 
And yes, I'm guilty. Shift F11. What does that do? This Shift will bring F11. full screen. If I there is eleven on my keyboard. Here it is. Ah. So ah. this is destruction-free coding. So maybe this will help me from result ah. in result. Group result by result dot product into G select product key count. Some of the count related are uh, I will select many related product. I don't see any problems with my code and it won't compile. All so right. copy paste. Copy paste. I admit I'm guilty. <laughs> we have, we've all done it. Yes, we've all been there. Maybe the problem is up here. Let me see. No. I'm now completely desperate. I will copy and paste even this. <laughs> we we did get a uh, another suggestion if there is an extra parenthesis on line 10. <laughs> yes, the, the, the thing is, you usually write these things here in the Visual Studio by inheriting yeah. a class and you see the final effect that developers cannot write code anymore without helping hand without <laughs> help exactly well so you you actually have a link complete link uh, syntax being supported here and mea culpa i know <laughs> so <laughs> all right so product recommendations are hopefully here so if i go these are the products these are the counts and here what i have here is what i called complex structure which contains re related products. So nice. what hopefully I'll be able to do now is something like this. So you see uh, for every product, I have that, for example, this product appeared 38 times and these are all related products. As you can see, sorted by- That's pretty cool. By appearance. So, but this is, this is not cool. This is unfriendly. This is too technical. <laughs> But we, so we I, got a nice. <laughs> yes, but let's do something like this. Uh, order by count. So I would like to order. And since this is based on the JSON, uh, in order to be able to sort numbers, I need to convert them to long. And then I will say select. And I'm now typing uh, code that will create something called projection, which is essentially view model served by the database itself. So I will create a small data structure that can serve as my as my view model. So this will be P. So I will say load me P dot product. So essentially instead of using these IDs in the listing, I'm going to take P dot P dot product this and load actual actual uh, uh, document reference by this and I will provide a name instead of this ugly ID. <laughs> and I would like to showcase, you see what I have here now. I have product 72A, this is horrible. No one wants to look <laughs> at the product 70A. So I will say P dot related. I'm taking this column and I'm doing infamous map function, which hopefully will not betray me this time. So I'm producing here object literal, which will have for every related product, it will have count and it will have product itself, but not ID. I will say load me, load me this ID. So load me X dot product. And then from the loaded document, this will be loaded document, take product name. So now when I execute it, I get an error. <laughs> so uh, I shouldn't be going to the job interviews with uh, a live coding. So let me see. <laughs> I'm selecting product load p dot product name related p dot related map. A. So let me see like this. Here I should be having structure like this. Copy, paste. Right, so it I 
don't think I need these two. You can hear me, <laughs> I think. So let me see, just a second product. So this one is good. So let me see if I comment this out. All right, I get product. So now I know that the problem is here. So related, p dot related map. This is most uh, interesting X. part to, to see other developers how, trying to figure out what's yeah. wrong. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite, yes. but I can't In really say it's point my point favorite point because point. I feel I feel bad. <laughs> Someone is also asking I feel for, what's load. So, what, uh, what's the load part? Okay, maybe it's time for me to stop doing live coding. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is a little bit later in the evening for us, so maybe that's why. Yes, coding after work. You you have it, coding after work. Yep. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And uh, also, uh, we have another one who, uh, Tyndall, he, uh, he also really enjoys uh, when we're trying to find the issues because otherwise we could just watch a YouTube video. That is so true. Exactly. So for the end of the evening, I can present you that uh, people who buy camembert cheese are buying these things as well. So six times, hmm. uh, whatever this, this is candy, I think, or, or sweet. Pavlova, that's a dessert with berries exactly. and cream and, and uh, meringue. Meringue. Yes, meringue. so you see, I have a, I have a product and I create... <laughs> what, I'm hungry. <laughs> I have a few human-friendly list of related products. In other words, I can say I people... I do who like a human-friendly people who bought camembert most often buy these two, or as I figured mm. out when I was younger, sometimes site owners tell you people who bought camembert <laughs> cheese bought these two because they need to sell these. But you see what I do? Uh. I created something called projection, which is producing human friendly uh, content, which can be used like a view model right away. You see, this is the raw JSON that gets delivered uh from the database you see what i did nice. i clicked at this yes. chain icon the chain icon and i opened uh, abnormously zoomed out a result set so, you <laughs> see. so this can be deserialized into a c sharp class and shown on the screen so in other words your database did all the work for you and you can just show it on the screen so you have one liner uh one liner uh uh, uh, control action and that's it i think it's time to wrap it up because you see i cannot type properly anymore <laughs> and also i don't think we can take any more wows and oohs and and <laughs> i have never in my life been excited about a database well a little bit when we talk to your colleague uh, oren um mm -hmm. but this is uh fantastic so this is super spectacular AI based uh, recommendation engine. <laughs> Just joking. It's not AI. It's simply counting products that are appearing together and uh, doing aggregation. So you see this projection you saw a moment ago, I created it here and then I performed a bit more complex uh, aggregation of these entries to come up with uh, totals, which then can be presented in human friendly way. That is super cool. cool. Yeah. And and apparently uh, there's more than one place that they uh, boost the value for some products they want to get rid of. Exactly. AI-based, 100% exactly. aggregates. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still snazzy and very nicely done in the data layer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, not expecting, again, to be uh, excited when we are talking about <laughs> databases. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it That's, sounds weird, uh, but it, it really does. And also, since you 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 uh, you're very um, you talk about being lazy, and it sounds kind of well. It's a, you mentioned boring, and <laughs> this was not boring. 
Yeah, far from boring. Far from boring. Yeah, but yeah, we needed was, we needed a like clickbait title, so I think we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, boring I in the boring. sense you you you'll install it somewhere, uh, you will deploy all these indexes, and uh, exactly. it will be working. And you should forget about your database. You should be what you should be doing. You should be delivering your software, and go home at five p.m and no mm. calls over the weekend uh, over the slow application mm. that that's the whole point that's the dream that's the dream i have it as well. thank you so much for showing us all this <laughs> well i You're need welcome. to show this uh, as well when databases get exciting that's when the panic sets in and i run around in circles like a headless hen trying to extinguish the fire with a can of gasoline <laughs> that's pretty much sums it up <laughs> How can I be excited about databases? I don't even know. <laughs> but you made it happen. So again, thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope it wasn't too boring. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. So what are we doing next week? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Stuff? Maybe. I think we should do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time. Take care. Bye. <laughs>